One of the main reasons that people come to Lady Alien and what it's definitely known for is the abundance of manta rays. So we're just getting our drone ready to send it up. Uh, we're going to be tagging a manta ray this morning. So... We've got three tags to put out over the course of this expedition. When you have feeding mantas, they tend to swim against the current and you are just drifting with the current. They started <laughs> dropping from the surface one by one and we were surrounded by five of them at one point. Lady Elliot is known as home of the manta and one of the reasons for that is we have one of the largest known aggregation sites for manta rays along the east coast of Australia. So I'm Dr Asia Haynes and I'm here with the research group Project Manta and we've been coming to Lady Elliot Island for almost 15 years now studying the manta rays that are found around the island here and beyond these waters as well. So on this trip we've got an exciting person that's come along with us, um, Dr Mark Erdman and Mark's actually here to help us deploy some of these high-tech satellite tags on the manta rays. So we've got these fast lock GPS tags that we're going to be deploying and these give us really high resolution tracking data of the animals so we can understand their habitat use, where they're going and what places are important to them. So over the next two weeks we're going to be uh, collecting photo IDs of the manta rays. We've got a long running photo ID database of them where we've recorded almost 1500 individuals and a thousand of them have been found in the waters around Lady Elliot Island. Uh, these manta rays have this unique spot pattern on their belly that allow us to identify them through time and we can use this spot pattern, photographs of the manta rays bellies to be able to actually catalogue individuals and then track their movement through time but it's very opportunistic so it doesn't allow us to track that animal in real time whereas when we deploy a satellite tag we can actually then track that animal in real time and we can see where it goes and what it's doing. So what we have here is a Splash 10 towed GPS fast lock satellite tag so this is pretty much the Rolls Royce of satellite tags for manta rays. Um, what this little beastie does is it, uh, it takes every second depth and temperature readings, but importantly, it also has um, a GPS fast lock processor on board. So that means that every time that this satellite tag breaches the surface, it only needs about five milliseconds on the surface to get a GPS position, um, which is fantastic. It stores that on board, and if it's on, on the uh, surface for long enough, this longer antenna here, which is an Argos antenna, talks to the Argos satellite network, which is exclusively for wildlife tracking and that's how we eventually get the data so basically we have these that we're going to deploy them for a hundred days at a time we've got three tags to put out over the course of this expedition hope to get one perhaps on a pregnant female um, a, a mature male and then whatever we get as the third one would would be uh, great the really cool thing about swimming with mantas is they're really intelligent they actually have the largest body to brain mass ratio of any fish. So they're really smart, they've got a big brain, and they're often really curious, also really calm. So they'll often come right up to you and check you right out. And as long as you're staying nice and calm in the water and you're not kicking or splashing or chasing, you can have them get, you can have these really incredible interactions where they'll really come right up to you. Finally got my friends in the back of my roller We gon' make it big one day We gon' make it big, I say We gon' make it big, just stay in the Stay in the moon Stay in the moon with me Give you a moment Give you a moment So we're just getting our drone ready to send it up uh, We're going to be tagging a manta ray this morning So we're really keen to put the drone up have a look out there and see if we can find a manta ray so then we know where to go out for our dives. Okay, I'm gonna go a bit higher than this. I'm, I'm gonna go out towards Lighthouse. 
drone technology has come a long way recently and we're actually able to use these units to locate where the animals are and then we can hover above them and we can actually gain fantastic bird's eye view of their behaviour. So we're using this to investigate their feeding patterns around the island, also their courtship behaviour and potentially not on this trip but a future aim is to be able to accurately gather size measurements of the individuals using the drone technology. going to be deploying these remote camera traps near the important cleaning stations for the manta rays. So we go down during a dive, we deploy the camera um, facing the cleaning station and we, we put it on record so when we're not in the water we're able to still capture the behaviour of the animals when there's no divers around and we're also able to gather those important photo IDs. So when we return from the dive, we download the SD cards off our camera traps and we're able to pull all the data off them from over a long period of time while they've been out in the water. And we're just downloading them from this morning's dive and sometimes you get some really funny bits of information um, off these traps. So one of the really cool findings from my PhD was that I'm studying one of the biggest fish in the sea and then I come to learn that it's actually some of the smallest animals that are actually driving their movement. So from the zooplankton that they feed on to the small cleaner wrasses that are on the cleaning stations, these huge animals movements through the ocean are being governed by these much smaller animals. <laughs> our broader leaf to reef research project, one of the aims is to actually analyse the plankton community that is around Lady Elliot Island. So we go out and we take a boat and we trawl for plankton through the water using a plankton net and then we collect that plankton, we bring it back into the lab and put it under the microscope and we can identify the different species that are found around the Lady Elliot waters. So we've done this as part of Leaf to Reef to analyse that um, nutrient signature that we're following from the island. But for Project Manta, we've also done this uh, looking at what the manta rays are feeding on. So we'll trawl through the water when the manta rays are feeding. We'll come back, we'll analyse how much biomass needs to be in the water for a manta ray to want to feed. And then what are the important species of plankton that are found in those samples? These uh, animals, we don't really see them in our samples constantly. There's a parasite, it's part of a, a group called um, isopods. And what that red could be is actually the last meal of this animal. So this animal has like a pointy mouth and they kind of go to the gills of fish or little sharks. In the reefs, like in the ones that we found here, there are fish that specialize in actually feeding of that. That's when uh, fish looks to uh, cleaning stations. So they open um, their, um, their opercles. So some fish can, like these little uh, cleaners, can come inside and actually feed off those type of isopods. So manta rays are coming to these cleaning stations to have ectoparasites removed from their skin. So it's a really important kind of form of body maintenance for the animals where they're out feeding in these deeper water environments and in the thick plankton and their skin picks up all these parasites within the water and then they need to move into these cleaning stations and the small little cleaner rash approach them and pick off the ectoparasites from their skin. They also tend to wounds and do a variety of things to actually keep the manta rays healthy. Crazy amount of preparation. we do deploy these tags or when we take the biopsies of the animals, uh, their welfare is foremost in our mind. So we do go through rigorous paperwork to, to do the work that we do. We apply for animal ethics, we get permitting from the marine park. We're in the game of understanding what these animals are doing for their conservation. So, so we're not wanting to injure them or impact their behaviours or activities.
satellite tags in a very similar way to how we take biopsies from the animal using a pole spear. And we can do this either on the surface when the animals are feeding, or we can do them when they're underwater, when they're using the cleaning stations. And we actually prefer to do it on scuba when they're using the cleaning stations because the animal's very relaxed and we're able to approach them in a way that we can deploy it exactly as we want. It's not a rushed situation. And that means that we get a good application as well as not hurting the individual. So I'm not going to lie, the tag when it is deployed, it does puncture the animal's skin so it, it, it certainly gives them a jolt but it's probably akin to getting your ear pierced so it's a it's a small sting when it when it's attached but we find that the animals will react straight away and then they'll often just resume their normal behavior within a couple of minutes oh yeah there. yes very happy we got a uh heavily pregnant female, which is um, really exciting because it means we'll hopefully get a chance to see where she gives birth. So, um, which is something which, you know, is not known for the Great Barrier Reefs. 12 months of the, is the, the gestation. They only give birth to a single uh, pup at a time. At the moment, nobody really knows where these animals pup in the wild. And that's a global thing. We, we still don't have the answer to that. So tagging a pregnant female is really exciting because she may actually reveal those secrets to us. Manta rays globally are actually a threatened group of animals. They are targeted in fisheries, whereas in Lady Elliot, we have a very healthy population along the whole Great Barrier Reef. They don't have any of these targeted pressures, and so we're able to see countless numbers of them in the water. I've been uh, tagging Manta since 2012, so 10 years now. Um, and this is a very, is a, is a great place to do it because you've got um, such a big population and they're all um, very chill, they're very used to divers. It's important to not stress out the manta when you do it and of course it's very important that you put it in a place where it, you're not going to possibly hit any organs. So we avoid the central disc, the central cavity, um, and really aim for the, the crease between the kind of the, the pectoral fin, the wing, and the, and the central body. So. It, it went in right where I wanted it to go, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing this tag uh, transmitting from the surface soon. So. We're just having a little look on the computer here to see where our tagged animals have gone. And you can see that it moved away from Lady Elliot Island over the last couple of days, went a little bit southwest down to the Herald Patches. And the last ping that we have from it is from further south towards the Longshoals off the tip of Fraser Island. I've been in the water at Lady Elliot during a feeding aggregation of up to 60 animals where you can't even believe you've got these spaceships moving around you in the most majestic way. I can help people get you know, a really incredible experience by getting them to stop and slow down, knowing, you know, that a manta might come in a little bit closer. So yeah, for me, yeah, it's just really, really special that I can share something that I love so much and see that bring such joy to other people. I know you're hiding, but come watch the skyline with me.